No joke. I'm not right? wiping the tears away because it's good. It's good TV. Hey, what's going on, everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans, and you're watching Hot Ones, the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. <laughs> Today, I'm joined by actor, comedian, fellow and bald icon, Rob Corddry. enjoyer. And if you want to see Rob, season two of Ballers returns Sundays to HBO. Yeah, that's right. I think good. that you'll be good through the first five or six, but okay. when we start to get to this area, that's what's. And what about you? Are you like, this is nothing? So I've done it so many times that I know what to expect. So you are kind of going against a stack deck over here. I'm already getting like the aroma of some of these, and I, it's probably down here. I'm just assuming <laughs> it's a little. It's violent. Right. It is. Are you Let's ready to get started? Yeah. First one is sriracha. That's oh. no big deal. Every day sriracha. It's like ketchup to us, right? Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. This is just rude of me. So the dynamic of the Daily Show field assignments mm. have always intrigued me. As somebody who interviews people all the time, it looks like it must be so bizarre behind the scenes to be messing with people <laughs> and then edit that together so that the humor comes through. The most uncomfortable thing was when I was on the show, we only had one camera. We could only afford one camera. We would do the interview first. I'd be asking you the questions. And then at the very end, we would just turn the camera around over here, and I would re-ask the questions. And that's when you can see it. They start to realize, they hear the questions a second time, and they start to realize like, oh, I'm screwed. The act of hearing a question a second time solidifies the reality Wait of what's going on. Wait a minute. Is there a field assignment in particular that kind of stands out to you as being especially uncomfortable or weird? It was a really fun one. I love the guy, but he's this doctor, wrote a book on germs, and we were trying to prove how voting booths are contaminated and can kill you. And he found, uh, we tested the booths, and he found fecal matter. He's trying to sell his book about <laughs> germs, and we're just, talking to him, but we, oh, we're fixated on the poop. And he was l yelling to his assistant, like, Doris, get them out of here! He was having fun as well, but he realized he's probably not gonna sell a lot of books. Let's have another wing while we talk about poop. <laughs> yeah. What's this, Tapatio? Tapatio is no big deal, another, another household name. Another classic. You've appeared on The Daily Show, Curb Your Enthusiasm, Arrested Development. I think a lot of people would say that those are three of the most defining comedies of our era. I'm wondering how you pick roles. Is it safe to say that you maybe go for the best project with the funniest people rather than being the star? Would that be a fair no, I only go, I'm like, this show is gonna be a defining <laughs> show. I'm gonna do that one. Yeah, that's exactly what I do. I mean, my only plan in life, my only real plan with my career solid plan is to do cool stuff with with people who aren't jerks i might not get paid as much as i as a lot of people but it's like it's that's nah, it's worth it to like have a good time i've had this before you have? right it's a standard a little less standard than those two but mm -hmm. yeah is it true that you were a security What's guard at the I'm met here? yeah i was Oh my God, I have about a thousand questions about that, really. Please, go. Do you ever see anybody on a first date? Are there certain things that you can key in mm. on? Yeah. How do you know? Well, we had these nights there. They would, they would open up the roof garden and it would be like a cocktail, look at art, and it, it was always, always, like almost exclusively first dates. But I think it's kind of a lame first date. That's what I think. So I think, you know, because I think it's like- It's a little pretentious. You're trying too hard. You're trying too hard. Oh, I like art. Yeah. And the, then the other side of that, people take a first date to like, no, let's go to Grace Papaya. Like, my favorite hot dog stand. It's like, now you're trying too hard to exactly. be real. What sorts of issues would a security guard at the Met have to deal with? Um, my one real job, my only job there, was to keep people from touching art. Now you think, who's gonna touch the art? That's what I Like, everybody about. knows not to touch it. <laughs> a lot of people, really want to get their hands on that. I was, there was like a high school class one day looking at this famous, it's like the death of um, Socrates, or is it death of Plato? Which one drank the hemlock? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the death of Socrates. It's like this masterwork, right? And there was a guy telling these kids about the painting and then, and somebody, some kid goes, which one's Plato? And this kid comes all the way from the back and makes a loop and he goes, 
this one, and he starts banging on Play-Doh. And I'm like across the room, suddenly like moving in slow motion. <laughs> like I can't like, no. And it had a divot in this famous paint. It was a little ding. On your there. watch. And it disappeared. They had to, re yeah, they had to repair. To pull it off the wall because of that jerk kid. Well, yeah, they gotta pull it off the wall, man. There's a ding in it. This is yeah. Louisiana style, right? Pain that was Louisiana kicky because it's habanero. This I have, think as a kick because Nate put the sauces on, and I can tell that this oh, is a Nate. generously sauced oh, episode. Nate. You son of a bitch. I read it was your decision to close the curtains on Children's Hospital, that, sort of oh. ride off into the sunset that Hold way. Hold on, I breathed in a little hot sauce. <laughs> Don't inhale hot sauce. All right, I'm good. And you said that you wanted to go out sort of on top, you know, while the show was still good, yeah. close it out while the show is still like that. Yeah. Which is very un-American. Usually, <laughs> usually, we drive shows right into the ground. Can you talk a little bit about that decision? Yeah, yeah, it really is. It's like not the way <laughs> we're supposed to think about this, you know? I think it's disrespectful to a show that I love to like let it go and, and die, basically. Like let it go and become something that no one cares about and not funny anymore. And it's just like a job to people. I mean, it was really special to all of us there and I wanted it to go out as special. So this next one is actually our hot sauce. It's the Hot Ones hot sauce. You're on the Hot Ones show. Is all about, man. Oh, the Hot Ones. Uh, fiery Chipotle. Get it while it's hot. <laughs> we have to write you a check for like 25 grand now, right? We'll work it out later. <laughs> so there are a lot of kids these days stereotypes. Mm -hmm. And I think that if I were a father, I'd be so worried that like my kids playing Pokemon Go on active railroad tracks or they're spending <laughs> all their birthday money on Kylie Jenner lip kits. As the father of daughters, can you talk about some of the challenges you face raising yeah. kids in 2016? Yeah, ma'am. My seven year old, since she was four, has wanted to be a tattoo artist. And we thought, oh, that's a cute thing for this four-year-old child to say, but she's still saying it. And she just bought, like, we just got her a Fender Strat and she's playing guitar and she was like, I don't want pink. I want to keep them authentic to what they, who they are, so they don't have to go out and, you know, try on these different personalities and all this other garbage. I don't know, man. I just do what my, 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 my wife does. What does your wife do? She's good at it. I just copy her. Mmm, like, oh, that one. You just went with the High River Rogue right I there. I believe so. And we had a kick. Yeah, that one was um, way more intense than that one. I know that you're a big Howard Stern fan. Oh, go ahead. And everyone has their favorite whack packers, the ones that they don't <laughs> like so much, and I was yeah. hoping I could just bounce a couple off go of ahead. you and you could give me the first yeah. thing that kind of comes to your Fun. head or what you think of them, okay? But my favorite, Jeff the Drum. Ooh, that comes, that it sticks it, yep. It's got a little, uh, yeah, afterburn. <laughs> That's what's taunting me right now. Jeff the Drunk. I could do without him. How about Beetlejuice? Oh, yo, I love Beetlejuice, man. He's the best. He's my favorite, I'd say. What about uh, Bigfoot? You like Bigfoot? Yeah. Anyone that they can prank, they can uh, prank call with uh, with their own voice. And that's a classic. Yeah, that's a me, yeah. When they got <laughs> Bigfoot's like try to fight himself. Yeah, what kind of game are you playing? Hey, motherfucker, it is. I am not a motherfucker, excuse me, what? Oh, oh it's so good. As a fan of the show, when you went on the show and you and Benji got into it, was that kind of exciting as a fan? It was a bummer. It was a bummer? It was a real bummer. The wrap up show is when we really went at it. Right, like, and we spent 20 I minutes. Pulled just, that they or something? pulled it. Yeah. We spent 20 minutes just screaming at each other, basically. And I saw red. It was one of those moments where I was like, I felt that adrenaline. I was like, am I gonna fight Benji Bronk in the wrap-up <laughs> show? Like, that's not good. I've, I feel bad about it. I would someday like to apologize to Benji because I don't like attacking someone's um, manhood. You know right. what I mean? Like, just hitting them at their job and, and, and perhaps threatening that, you know, I don't really understand what it is he does there, so I have no place to say that. And I was just trying to be funny, I think, and I feel bad for him. 100% pain. Not 90, not 89. Okay. 
Oh man, that's gonna. It's gonna hit. I feel you already right. know it. Yeah, that's gonna be something. In Ballers, you play this financial advisor who's really more of sort of this back room deal maker kind of oh. easily guy. Oh wait, yeah, that wait. You see like the Kevin Durant go into Golden State, maybe you think about it differently because you've kind of played a role as somebody who does that behind the scenes thing. I wasn't listening to a word you were saying. Oh, it's changing in my mouth. Mm-hmm. Oh, my whole head. It's I kind of like it. Embrace the challenge. What if I run out of milk? Do I only, we get, I only we allow got, the... We got milk oh. on deck. Um, zoom in on my eyes. Just so you can get the tears. <laughs> Whew! Uh, how you feeling? You tapping out? Uh, let's eat another one. This is the bomb beyond insanity hot sauce. Yeah. It is no joke. Rob, you walked in here talking a big like... game. Yeah, I know. Oh no. You can taste that it's coming. I got it. That's terrible. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is the worst. Is this your favorite Shetland? I'm running down my face. Oh yeah, real tears. Third time ever. Only the third time? Mm -hmm. Every fluid in my body is. I just peed my pants. Can I get you? <laughs> Both. That's a hot one's first. Make sure not to put these fingers in my eyeballs. Sam, this is the worst thing I've ever done. Yeah. Tapping out, Rob? I don't want to give up. One more? I don't. I. I. And I'm done. I'm done. I can't do it. Yo, I think I'm gonna stop here, bro. I'm gonna keep it. I can't. I'm not doing it, man. I'm done, man. I can't do it. Man. I'm out. Fuck this thing. So you chill. I'm gonna eat, and I'll just ask you questions. You just try to relax over there. <sighs> No joke. I'm not wiping right? the tears away because it's good. It's good TV. Do you remember the story behind your first fist fight, or maybe your most eventful fist fight? <sighs> and it was quick. How'd it go down? Um, I got punched in the face, and they stole my lacrosse stick. I was um, just hitting balls against the side of a wall. And uh. <laughs> <laughs> All I want to talk about is sauce right now. All right. How do you, so, I can't even imagine. This is a show we always have to apologize for. Every time. I know, I think this is the best idea for a show ever. You do? I do. Thanks, Rob. You're very good at this, because you really want to, <laughs> you want to power through those questions. And I'm done answering those questions. It's always what happens. I'm just talking about my mouth. So this next one is, Mad Dog 357. I'm not eating that. I'll eat it if I can just. Where's ask the you antidote? Questions. What if? Have you ever had anybody throw up? I think Riff Raff might have. And pass out. Um, I don't know. I think that would be a first. Well, are you close? Nah, I'm good. I was exaggerating for uh, comedic purposes. I'm still. But you don't, I don't think you're exaggerating that much. I'm not exaggerating how much it hurts. I got the hiccups now, too. Ask me questions about my mouth. How's your mouth doing? It's on fire. That's Mega sick. death sauce with You're not going to put more on that. That's the tradition around here. We dab the last wing. Wow. It's not a fun experience, but it's one you gotta go through. You don't have to. No. <laughs> you think about it. You know, I did this yesterday. This yeah. little window into you, my sh I know, shitty right? life. I was really excited. I love wings. All right, so I'm gonna take this bite. I'm gonna ask you a question. <laughs> okay. I need a little advice from you. Go ahead. Can you tell me about coming to terms with baldness? Because for a while there, you were like me, where you were kind of caught in this no man's land. Fuck, Nate. So. Oh, God. Give me some advice. Like, what, when oh. did that hit you? What, when like, did you come luckily, to terms with it? I came to terms with it when I was a little kid. Because 
every male in my family is bald. Some of the females are bald. It, I started losing it when I was like 19, 20, and I just wanted to, to go. Like, I was like, all right, let's get, get this part over me. And then I just see, you know, cut it close. There you go. Bald is beautiful. Maybe I should do the same thing. You don't, you have a full head of hair. Yeah, but it gets kind of like, it's starting to look like Florida. Yeah, but that's cool. That, Thanks, look, you see the back. Let me see the top. You're doing fine. You're doing fine. How'd you, how are you doing with that wing? Somehow made it through. Uh, yeah. Cleared the board. One of the most heavily sauced episodes we've ever had, unfortunately for you, Rob. <laughs> I was on a heavily sauced episode. The floor is yours. This camera, or that camera, let the people know what you got going on in your life. I don't know, I got nothing. What do you got? Let's do it. Let's do this, me and you. Um, and also watch Ballers in, uh, on HBO at uh, 10 p.m. on Sunday. Ugh. Easy. Oh. Usually I take some plug too. I'm pretty blasted out after this episode. <laughs> <laughs> He's on fire. Yeah, I'm glad that you're having trouble too.